So basically what we're doing is sending our vet a message so that she's aware of how many cats are coming back so that her and the vet nurse can get the kits ready and prepare the pre-meds ready for their operations. We want to ideally get them in, get them neutered and get them back out as quickly as possible causing as little disruption to them. At the end of the day it's what we call an elective procedure which is where um, we've actually chosen to carry out this treatment on the animal um, rather than a curative procedure where we're carrying out something to actually fix something that's wrong. So it's important that the, during the whole procedure that they don't undergo any more harm than is, is absolutely necessary. Um, and at the end of the day for these cats it's often the only time that they're going to be in close proximity to humans so we want to do the best thing by them. The cards basically let us know, you can't really see it's in yellow, but where the animals come from, what time it was caught, how much it weighs. We've pre-weighed each basket, so when we put it on the scales in the basket we can take the amount the basket weighs away and I've got an accurate measurement for the anaesthesia. Um, whether this particular cat needs to go back into that particular basket, the colour, um, if the cat's definitely feral or not, so this cat is quite feral, um, what they estimate the cat to be. And then if we have a mum cat with nursing kittens, they'll circle the K for me, which means that we have to get her back on the same day so that those kittens are safe. So that gives me all the information I need to know to work out the anaesthesia that we're going to be using. The difference with um, dealing with feral cats in a, a neutering in a clinical environment compared to neutering pets is that these are cats that have had virtually no direct contact or handling by people so they actually throughout their entire proximity to humans they're quite scared and they're quite stressed so what we want to do is get them in and out as quickly as possible uh, make sure that our handling is sensitive to the uh, the sort of fears and the stresses that they have um, we also try to be very aware of the fact that um, unlike with pets it's much harder to maintain their fluid and food food intake levels whilst they're in surgery so we will um, often give them things like subcutaneous fluids whilst they're being operated on um, and we really want to ideally just get them back into their, their normal routine as quickly as possible so that they're, they're back out eating, drinking, um, foraging in the environment they're comfortable with and um, that helps them to recover as, uh, a lot faster than uh, keeping them in the hospital environment you know, for excessive periods of time. While they're here in the clinic for the 24 hours, they obviously can't do anything to help themselves stay alive. They can't move. If the room's really cold, they can't um, access any extra food and water apart from what we put in the pens with them, uh, which is one of the reasons we give them subcut fluids, just to make sure that they have enough on board the food we put in the pens, we add extra water to it to ensure that they don't uh, dehydrate that way as well. We do give them quite bland food in the cages because we don't know what they've been eating outside. So we've just given the sedation and um, because he might be feral, we um, just use the crash cage so that um, they're not too scared and we're still safe to give the injection. Um, I'm just checking um, if he's asleep yet. He looks fairly asleep but um, we don't want to be fooled with a feral one. They can be quite feisty still but he's not reacting at all, me poking him. So before we open the cage that's what we usually check to make sure that they're not flying out of the cage. And although he behaved quite feral when we injected him, it could be that he's an own cat and is a um, registered cat. So we always scan them first for a microchip before we go ahead with anything else. Um, 
I guess we always make sure that the room's not too cold for them. We make sure when we're cleaning them for surgery that we don't get a lot of liquid on the fur around the surgery area because that um, makes them a lot colder when we put them back. Um, obviously we always have to make sure the staff are safe because if these ferals are at all awake or conscious, their first thought is to get away. It's flight, not fight, and um, we don't want anybody scratched or bitten or anything like that. So they do stay in the cage the entire time unless they're completely anaesthetized on the table. Um, they go back into their cages before they're recovered so that they will recover in the pens as well. We do keep an eye on them until they're fully up and mobile just in case anything should happen to them. Uh, we do give them pain relief in, in an injection to last them a little while um, and they will have a carer monitoring them outside. We give them long-acting antibiotics as an injection as well, uh, which we wouldn't do with a domestic cat coming in because obviously they'd have an owner that could look after their wound for them. And they get a vaccine, a one-off vaccine, because there are studies to show that they do get an amount of immunity even just from the single vaccine, uh, which will help them in the next year or two.